big army expressions video uh, this one's a little different in that it, this one is not a model review it's not instructions on how to fold something this one is an interview with Paul Hansen, the author of the recently published Origami Ninjas and Other Paper Sorcery. And Paul will be speaking to us about his origami experiences and the book in just a moment. Uh, I first met Paul about 10 years ago when he was helping to organize one of the British Origami Society conventions, which happened twice a year. Uh, Paul is heavily involved in the British Origami Society, in, in which capacity uh, he acts as the publications officer, maintaining and curating the BOS's extensive collection of books, booklets and pamphlets. Um, having moved away from the British Origami Society um, for a while, I renewed the acquaintance with Paul last year um, at a London Origami mini meeting, which is a a British Origami Society affiliated event, which takes place on a monthly basis um, in, I think, is it is it Festival Hall, Paul? Yeah, Festival Hall. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yes, yeah, so it takes which place on the, month. on the embankment. Absolutely. So if, if you're interested in that, then I'm sure Paul can, can mention about, more about that in 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 a few moments. Okay. So I'd just like to start by saying, um, Paul, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, welcome to Origami Expressions. Um, it's, it's good to be able to talk to you about your origami, um, uh, your design experiences and your book. Um, maybe we should start at the beginning in, in terms of, well, what actually got you into origami in the first place? Okay, well, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I think I first come across origami as a child, um, and it was really Robert Harvey. Um, I saw the last of the TV series um, that was broadcast. Wow. Um, and it... Um, it obviously inspired me to fold things, but to be honest, it was a momentary thing. It's one of the things in childhood. It's on TV, you follow it for a bit, it goes off the TV, um, and that's it. I then, you know, I did buy the books that come with the series. I then sought out the books, found that they existed, um, and I think I probably got origami out at Christmas time, you know, a few Christmas stars and things, but apart from that, that was it. Um, so I think in some senses that it, that's an origami background and a way of getting started that, that it, it almost feels quite traditional in a sense for um, people of, of a similar age to you and me in terms of how we got started because actually like you I got started through um, Robert Harbin's um, actually books rather than rather than TV stick, um, and, and, and his, his series of books Ori, origami the art of paper folding um, and then moved on from Robert Harbin to Lillian Oppenheimer to Eric Kennaway. So it was a similar sort of thing. And actually, yeah, my first involvement with origami was something of a fleeting thing before I then discovered things like girls and alcohol and then renewed <laughs> it. I like that. So, so it, it sounds like a, a similar sort of thing in your case. Yeah, but so then it, it was a case of I didn't attempt to make my own things. It was just following along and... Then I went on to a, the next thing that <laughs> was current, and that was it, really. Absolutely. So, so what sort of things do you like folding when you're not designing? What's 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 the kind of things that, that you like to, to fold in your spare time? Um, to be honest with you, I'm more triggered by things that help me understand my own creations. Uh, I, I, first of all, I do apologise for that. Uh, it looks like we had a momentary te temporary um, difficulty there, but we're back now. Uh, so, Paul, um, you were starting by, you were continuing by saying um, how you got back involved with origami again more recently. Um, yeah, I, it was a chance um, that a friend at work runs a martial arts school, and I'd done some um, artwork, because basically I draw and then discover that you draw people that uh, ask you to do artwork for them. So I'd done a design for his, um, a logo for his club, and one particular occasion, he had an event on a village green where they have a stand, and he really wanted to make the stand look a bit better than they had done before. And he was asking me, and I thought it'd be good if he actually had some figures. And well, I'm not really into sculpting, but it occurred to me that I once did origami, and the old joke about a black book and origami. So I thought, well, I'll have a look at my old books and see if I can modify something. And in this Robert Harvey book, uh, I think it's origami three. Robert Harvey mentions at the beginning of the skier model that this is a figure base, Neil Elias figure base, he called it. And he said, you can have a go at making your own figures. 
But I thought, oh, that's an idea. So I did. And that's the result. So basically, this was the kind of thing that was appearing um, on their stand. So after having done that, it got me interested in, oh, I wonder what else I can do with origami. I wonder what's going on. Um, so I then looked online. I found the British Origami Society website. And I thought, oh, this looks interesting. Um, maybe I'll join. So I joined. Um, and then you get invited along to local meetings, London meetings, I went to the, along to the London meetings. And fortunately, there's quite a few people in the London group at the time, I think now as well, that are um, origami creators. So I was then um, able to learn from them how origami models can be you know, created from scratch. So that really inspired me to try and make my own stuff with really. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's very interesting. I, um, the origami skier model that you mentioned in Robert Harbin's book, one of the other posts that I have on my, on my origami blog is exactly that model. So if you're watching this video um, on YouTube, you may want to check out my blog, www.origamiexpressions.com. Um, or if you're watching this through my blog, then then search for origami skier um, and you'll find exactly the model that, that Paul is talking about. And I have to say that, that yes, there is a very good reference there, there to the Neil Elias figure base. And I, I remember when I was folding that for the first time, um, I had pretty much the same thought process as you did, Paul, and, and thinking, actually, you know what, this is a great way of getting into design, designing some figures. Unfortunately, unlike you, I never followed through on that. Um, <laughs> so, but it, it, they are very impressive um, origami um, figures in the background. I, I like the, 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 the range of styles on, on, on the black belt and origami karate figure there. That's absolutely excellent, which, of course, is one of the models in your book. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the ninja model come about from the fact that so after I've been attempting to design things for a while, there really isn't an origami ninja and there ought to be. So, I, I, you know, I did it. And, you know, if you're going to do it, try and make it look um, as best as you can in terms of human figure-wise. So that was really the attempt. But that, that was a long while after the other model that you see there. Um, yes. It really was a long while of going to London meetings, finding out what people do, reading books, folding models that um, could give me techniques that would help. Um, so there's quite a period between those two models. Actually. Yes, I'm, I'm sure there is. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the things that I'm quite pleased about um, about the the, the, the book um, Origami Ninjas and other paper sorcery is that that particular model, the Origami Ninja, um, is one of the main models in the book, and indeed is featured on the cover. Because actually, the first time that we met at, at an origami convention all those years ago, you were exhibiting that model. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I saw it in, in the exhibition and thought, I really must learn how to fold that. Um, and attended your class that you were teaching um, on origami human anatomy. Um, so it, it's oh been one of those. Yes, I, remember that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would show you what I actually folded in, 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 in that class. Unfortunately, I gave it away a, a, couple, of, a couple of days ago because I just simply had um, too much origami in, in, in my flat. But yeah, so it, it, it's almost like the, the, the fulfillment of, 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 a, of a kind of small personal ambition of mine to fold that model. So thank you very much. Um, so moving on to origami design, um, I suppose one of the things I was, I was interested in asking was why you started to design. And, and, and I think you've already answered that in, in terms of, well, actually, I, th I think for most people, it, it tends to be you start by folding th things and folding a lot of other people's things. And then somewhere down the, down the line, you actually start, you move more into the area of um, maybe I'd like to design my own. But for you, this, this was very much a kind of twin track process from, from, from quite early on in, in your origami life. It was, yeah. I think I come more from the background of, I've always liked to be able to depict human figures in some way, mainly drawing, and they're not easy. It's one of the hardest things to draw. But, you know, I, I'm not an expert, you know, but I, I persevered. And I think the idea of then transferring that into 3D, um, which would be sculpture, and I would, I, I, I've not really thought about sculpture, but this, this link with the martial arts school um, gave me the opportunity to think, well, okay, let's try 3D in some form. And yeah. that really springboarded the thought that, well, let's actually try making human figures with origami how close can we get and thank you very much for that so i was i was going to ask kind of what would you say are your major influences in, in terms of maybe genres and also people in terms of your origami 
design style? I mean, you mentioned the fact that that you do a lot of drawing, um, and, I've, and and actually, when you autograph the, the book, then then there's a, there's one of your cartoons of an eye in the front of it. So, what's what's the kind of um, genres and inspirations, both in terms of outside origami, but also in terms of maybe other origami designers that, that inspire the world? Okay, well, I think th this comes throughout my life. I, I, I probably, as a child, apart from the short short span of origami. Um, American comic books interested me, and what particularly interested me was the artistic style of the, of the time. There are a few artists that were really doing dynamic drawings um, that probably encouraged me to try to draw human figures, actually. So moving on from that, um, as more of an adult you, fantasy artist, such as Frank Rosetta, Boris Villaggio, um, all those people um, made me want to be able to paint, made me want to be able to depict figures like they could um, mm. and with the origami I'm almost trying to create dynamic figures and all those influences are there they're still there I'm trying to do Frank Rosetta in origami but really. <laughs> I haven't succeeded um, but also trying to not not copy as it were um, you can have influences and be moved in a direction but obviously I don't want to copy but you are influenced um, and hopefully it you know, it, it comes through and what you end up creating, I think. But, um, but yeah, so it's those kind. Now, origami-wise, um, clearly Neil Elias um, was obviously an influence because of the skier, and, and he does some fantastic figures. Um, only one figure base that didn't really suit me for my general, it, it didn't work for me for the ninja, for example. I, I couldn't, I played around with it a bit. So I then was really looking at what other people are doing. There is, of course, Eric, Joselle, who's mm. um, absolutely fabulous work, which <laughs> you know is so it's unbelievable. Um, that is an influence in looking at it, really, because there isn't a lot of dynamic people working around anyway. So I can't really say I was able to be influenced by his folding techniques because I, you know, there isn't much out there that shows it. Um, but I think sometimes general techniques help, such as Robert Lang's origami design secrets helped me a lot in understanding how to create extra flaps that kind of thing. Um, uh, the Momotamis also, um, you know, some of their work appears quite simple, but um, actually a lot of it is very interesting. Um, and they've experimented with human figures, both as a single piece and multi-piece. Um, so that idea of, you know, um, not worrying about how many sheets of paper you're using, but trying to get the importance of the anatomy as best as you can. Um, which is not easy, but um, you know, so absolutely, I, I think you do very well at it. Um, um, but origami design is, is definitely one of those skills that, that, that takes a very long time to master. Um, and, and as you say, that, that there's quite a long time between the, between the karate figure and, and the ninja figure in, in, behind you and, and in the book. Um, but it, it, it's it, it's it's something that I think I think you can see the progression in, in terms of how you've gone about these things, and, and I absolutely love it. Um, in terms of how you design, would you describe yourself as an origami traditionalist, or, or, are, you, or are you kind of prepared to throw off the shackles of, of traditional origami, if you like, and, and kind of be slightly more free with it? Um, a lot of it depends what you mean by tradition. It did, um, uh, all different people have different rules, if that's what you mean, and sometimes mm. they're self-imposed rules. I, I tend to be open to all kinds of things. I mean, sometimes a lot of my models actually come about through not trying to create the thing that I've ended up with at the end. So it's moving in a direction that suddenly you see something in the paper and think, oh, now that looks interesting. Let's explore that and not being worried about exploring that. But, oh, I must stick with my original thought, you know, but no, actually, this actually is better than <laughs> what I mean was thinking about. <laughs> Let's go in that direction. So what's quite good is that um, improvisation, hmm. the ability for origami to enable you to improvise in a way that is almost constrained because when you're drawing on a, on a blank sheet of paper with a pencil you can draw anything which is inspired by what you see it's basically based on your ability that's the, your your restriction whereas the paper will move you in a direction that will take you to a certain point and when you're in, you're um, intuitively folding you end up with a certain thing or in a certain direction 
and you can't move anywhere you want to go. It will only allow you to go certain ways. And sometimes that is inspiring in itself. Yeah, it, it's... I, Having spoken to a number of designers on, on, on this one, and, and some people say, well, actually, you know what, I'm going to start out and I'm going to, I know I'm going to design precisely what it is for minute one, and I'm going to need this point there and that point there and, 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 and this point there. Um, and then there's the other that's the other side of origami design, which is much more um, explorative, um, almost akin to, to to doodling, if you like, in terms of the drawing that you like. Um, personally, I, I think in some senses, this is where what separates maybe the designer from the folder i mean I, i'm i'm starting to explore the possibilities of design and, and st starting to think around how i can explore the journey that, that you've already been, been on um so successfully um but as i started to doodle on the on the piece of paper then mine tend to end up as um large splodges of paper with with many folds in them that don't actually tend to represent anything very much so it, it, it it's I can see the merit in, in doodling and, and, and improvisation, but it, it's as much you have to have that ability to to have that creative expression which which you've got. Otherwise, yeah. you're doodling without without aim. I think there are three factors there. There is um, you're quite right. If you just doodled, you probably wouldn't go anywhere. So first, of all, you have to have an idea. You start off with an idea and you doodle. But the background of the doodling is actually have some idea of what the paper can do, and that is really evolved in two ways. First of all, folding quite a lot of things and not necessarily the things you're interested in. So if I'm interested in human figures, then it's great to fold other things because there's techniques in folding other things that you can use to create figures. So it's learning the techniques. And also, the, I mentioned Robert Lane's already got me design series. It's good to have a background of some of the basics that are mentioned in there because then you know the directions that some of your organisation could possibly go into yeah, I have to say, for anyone who's watching this that hasn't got a copy of that book, then it is one I wholeheartedly recommend. I personally have two copies, um, and I've, um, one which is which is signed and one which is not. I've read them both back cover to cover, but at the same time, then it, it's still kind of building that creative spark in there. But it, it's interesting. Thank you. Um, moving on to um, the book, um, this one, um, Origami Ninjas and Other Pack of Sorcery. Um, we were at a London origami mini meeting quite recently um, and somebody there um, said they liked your style, that there was a very consistent style in the book. So uh, how would you describe your own personal style of creation? Um, I think it's, it's my attempt to try to um, depict human anatomy as best as I can with paper. Um, but then also having an eye to a little bit of abstract. Right. Because some of the models in the book, you would think, well, they're definitely not um, correct human anatomy. Um, but they're kind of, they're, they're an attempt to show um, the, the basics in a, in a certain way. <laughs> um, it's difficult to answer your question beyond that, really. Um, I think I just move in a direction. Uh, I've got an aim to try and do what I just said. And it, it ends up with the models that you see in the book, really. <laughs> True. I think, uh, the first thing for me, in, in terms of what I'm, I'm having folded the models in the book, and, and, and um, I think that there's, you can see your fantasy influence coming through that, um, yeah. both in, in terms of the models that are in the book um, and also in the way that you present them and, 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 the, and the photography. Um, I would actually like to add, well, first of all, kind of thank you very much for making it an attractive book. Um, so I, I think as, as people who've, who've, who've spent much time reading my blog will know and, 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 and from some of the, my other posts, I'm a big believer that origami is a visual art um, and origami books should reflect that and be visually appealing um, and, in, and inspiring you to actually fold the stuff that's in there. I think it's, it's, it's moving in that direction, but there are still some, some quite classic origami books out there that, that just aren't as, as visually appealing as, as perhaps they could be, and, that, and that's a shame. So thank you very much, I would say, for, for the work you put into making this an attractive book um, with, with great photography and, and, and very clear diagrams. I, I do think it's important for an origami book. I mean, to be honest with you, that exactly what you just said is the thought I had. There is some absolutely brilliant origami books out there, but there's no photographs with them to show off the models. Um, and I think we, we are, you're quite right, we've moved 
more and more towards that direction. So that's that's great, really. Um, and, and of course, again, Robert Harbin may well have been the inspiration for that because those classic three origami books of his, he apparently he done the photography and the setup for those cover pictures. Wow. Um, but of course, the book itself um, doesn't have any poem. No. And, 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 you know, it, and it may be the publisher, you know, it may be that at the time they, you know, there's probably lots of different reasons for that. Um, but it's great to see, as you say, that we're moving towards that direction. And, you know, I've taken that on board and tried to um, do that in the book really as best I can. So, um, yes, I, I think it, it shows and it has succeeded, so, so thank you. Um, one of the models in the book that, that I did find really interesting was the model that um, was featured in the film Red 2. Um, I, I, I saw the film and I remember what, um, when I saw the film, I was like, oh, wow, we have origami here. That, uh, I wonder where they got that from. And so to actually then to kind of um, read your book and fold from your book and, and, and discover this was your model, I was absolutely fascinated by that. How on earth did you get involved in, in that film and what was your brief? Um, right, okay. Well, basically, um, I was contacted by email, and it was really a, a very broad, um, we're making this film, and um, we'd like to be able to make an origami knife, you know, can you assist us? It was something like that, really. Um, and I thought, oh, Phil, now the thing is, I, I also have a background with films, because I used to make amateur films, so I'm actually quite interested in filmmaking. So if anyone mentions film to me, then immediately oh yeah okay I'll, I'll give you a hand so anyway so i i contacted them went to see them and effectively the interview for the job um what they first asked me is um is it possible to kill someone with origami so <laughs> my response to that was yeah just to place that a little bit this is a sequel to another film that had been made and this first film has a, a, as a, I know it's realistic, it has an edge of spoof to it. So my response was that, well, if Red 2 is going to have the same level of spoof as Red 1, I think we can get away with it. <laughs> but the reality is you probably can't do something with origami. That was my thought, anyway. <laughs> um, and it sort of developed from there, really. I think originally they were, they had the idea of a, a flick, they really wanted a flick knife. They had this idea in their mind. I actually took along a model I'd already made of a knife just to show them what's, what's possible. Um, but I, I sort of talked them into other ideas because really if someone's um, folding a model in front of someone, what happens in the film to effectively assassinate them, um, they wouldn't really fold a flick knife and then unflick it and then, you know, so it didn't seem to work. For me. So I suggested that, you know, look at another one. I think backwards and forwards, we were talking about the fact the character is in fact a martial arts character. So, well, he should have a bit of style to him, he should go along with his, um, uh, the fact he is a martial artist. So therefore the idea of the Psy weapon, which is a ninja weapon, um, being made in origami, um, come about really. And also the fact that the model's folded in such a way that it appears to have quite a, a strong blade that you might think is possible to um, penetrate the jugular. In fact, I've got it here. Yeah. The very one. Yeah, because I think, I mean, there was backwards and forwards with the, um, you know, the film crew, and this wasn't my first idea, but they actually suggested, well, why don't you make this thinner? Because then we're going to have, you know, that, so, for the joke. Right? <laughs> so it was a backwards and forwards um, kind of um, thing. Something of a collaborative yeah. process. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I must say, the team on the film were very, very good. The fact that I'm not in the film industry, I was, you know, welcomed in and it was a great experience, really. Honestly. Excellent. Quite a lot of fun. <laughs> well, it brings a new meaning to the word paper cut, anyway. Absolutely, so. yeah. <laughs> I think my other favourite section of the book has to be um, the bit at the back um, where you talk around um, human anatomy um, and actually how you get the proportions right, um, what the kind of relative sizes should be um, and, and, and how what the, in terms of how a male body and a female body are structured, the triangles, the relative proportions of, of the various body parts, how you can construct arms and legs. I thought that was absolutely fascinating, and it, and for me, it kind of built on um, another resource that that I, I bought, which was around. I, I suppose this is kind of similar to the way you think about these things. Around, which was a, a, a magazine around drawing human figures. So, it, it, and since this is an area that I would like to explore, as as hopefully my design abilities improve. So, it was it was nice to actually have that kind of 
a the, the reference in terms of how you draw human figures but then also the kind of um from a, an, an origami designer well how you actually kind of think about how a human body is constructed and it's a, you can apply that in origami it, it's certainly one of the most interesting um, um sections of the book and i, I get the general feeling it, it's probably one of your favorite yes it, it is i mean the, the generally with origami we we are given instructions and we follow um, the instructions and hopefully we'll end up with the model that the designer um, expects but I feel that what we ought to also do as well is add our own understanding to what we're following. So the idea is you could follow, for example, the ninja or any other sort of figures in the book um, that have the, the, the anatomy um, there. And you know, there is guidance of where to fold. But if the person folding it also has an understanding of anatomy, they will get a much better figure in the end. And really, you can only really do this by um, trying to assist people understand anatomy. If you don't know anatomy, then you won't know what's wrong. Um, I mean, one of the things about humans actually is we can generally recognise whether anatomy is correct or not if you see a drawing because we're so used to seeing human figures and people, as it were. Um, so that does help. But to actually have an understanding of the structure, so when you come and fold a human figure, um, you will then add something yourself to it um, that will get a better result. And that's really the idea. So the idea at the back there is to human anatomy is, um, is an unbelievably complex subject to learn um, so what I've tried to do is um, from the years of my drawing attempting to understand human anatomy is boil it down to what's an origami person need minimum to create a figure that looks reasonably well structured as a human figure so that's really the idea of it and as you, you know there's photographs in there that show in particular some of the um, muscle folds and things like that mm. So it's very well done. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much. It's, it's kind of instructive, and, and I think it might be quite a strong resource for me as I move forwards and, as I say, try to explore the, the origami design journey myself. Um, so, I suppose the next question is: Well, what's next for Paul Hansen? Where do you go from here? Is there going to be a an origami ninjas and other and other paper sorcery volume two? Um, I mean, I, I've got a resource of models that I've made and um, designed. Um, it's really a case of um, do I do another book that it won't be ninjas too because I think ninjas are, are really you can do variations but they're effectively done. Um, so it would be other it, it could there could be a book of other things that I design and there's enough work for another book. Um, but there are also other ideas things that you could do. I, mean, I, I once done for example a fictional series called Oru World. Oh yeah, um, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's basically this world where people actually are like pieces of paper and they can fold themselves and it's stories about them. So I was thinking of turning that into a book with models in the book, um, of the, the characters in the book, that type of thing. So that's sort of at the back of your mind to do that as well. Um, so at the minute, I'm not sure, really. I, I, I don't really want to say because then I'll probably have to stick to it. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of those sort of things and there may be other things as well. So. Yeah. Okay. I've certainly well, got a resource of, of, of models that have been made, and uh, and also when you start working on a book anyway, you end up being inspired further than that. Okay. So where can people go to find out more information about you and, and your work and the stuff that you do? Okay, but well, the website um, sorcery of origami is one word dot co dot uk. Um, that's really the best place. I think it um, talks about the work as photographs. Um, link to where you get the book from. Um, there's also a little app available for Android users um, that is available from there. Basically it's the Ninja Fold um, on the move. So you can do the Ninja on the move with a mobile app <laughs> in the Google Play Store now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you for that. Um, now, Paul has very graciously offered a copy of this book, um, and there's also a, 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 a bookmark as well that uh, goes with it, um, which is, yeah, actually talks about the, 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 the Google app, app itself. So um, there's the bookmark, um, and here's the book. Paul has offered a copy of this um, as a giveaway through origamiexpressions.com. Um, so thank you very much for um, your generosity, Paul. Um, the book is is signed, um, and indeed it has a, a, a small cartoon um, in the front of it. 
Um, there is one copy available um, on this giveaway, um, and all you have to do to be in with the chance of winning that is go to my blog, www.origamiexpressions.com, and click on the link to subscribe. Um, the winner will be chosen uh, from people who have subscribed to the mailing list um, in response and, and to express an interest in this book. Um, and will be one person will be a lucky winner. Uh, this um, competition will be open from two weeks um, as from the date of, of um, publication of this video. So um, please feel free to go to www.origamexpressions.com, subscribe, and then you can be in the chance of winning this signed book. Uh, obviously, not everybody um, can uh, can win a copy. Um, so, Paul, if, if people are unlucky and, and don't manage to win this copy, then where can they go to find your book? Um, well, you can go to the website, thesourceofrollandarmy.co.uk, and on the shop section, there's a link to um, Amazon. It's on Amazon.com, so if you search for um, origami ninjas, then you'll find it there anyway. Um, okay. Oh, the bookmark um, that comes with the book, it actually has a free download for the app. Oh, marvellous. So, um, yes, good luck with that, everybody. Um, I will put all links um, that have been mentioned uh, in, in, in this video in the comments section um, of the video on YouTube, and I will also make sure that, that they are included in the blog post that accompanies this video. So please do feel free to check those out. Uh, I think that all that remains is to say thank you very much for your time, Paul. It's been a really interesting conversation. Um, uh, thank you for, again for um, providing a copy of the book um, for this, this competition um, and good luck with your future ventures or whatever they may be. Thank you very much for inviting me, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Paul. <laughs>